it's something we've spoken about many times before with Wendy. When you're shopping online, be very, very careful that the website you're shopping on is a legitimate one. And I came very close to being duped this weekend, Wendy. And I just thought I'd share the story with listeners to demonstrate how important it is to check and check again. Because I wanted to buy a pair of shoes for my husband's birthday. He had his eye on a particular pair of sketches. And I wasn't finding his size on the foot gears that, and the uh, take lots and that puts you in the danger zone or in the stores because then you go online and you put what you want and there's always a fraudster waiting with exactly to offer it. what you want at a really good price in this case a half size which is not an easy right. thing to find on the major sites and uh, yeah sure enough I thought okay not getting anywhere on the superbalists and take lots etc I wonder if sketches have got a destination store in Cape Town so I googled sketches Cape Town and up popped a sketches South Africa website sketches South Africa dot co dot za so I thought great I'll go there and find out where my local store is or whether I can buy online. And sure enough, oh, you can shop online. And I found exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> of course for. you did. And guess what? It was on sale too, oh, Wendy. I risked my case. Bottom line, I was on. I was literally typing in my credit card number when I heard Wendy Nola's voice in the back of my head <laughs> saying, have you checked the URL? <laughs> and Wendy, so, so slickly done because it was such a professional looking website. It all looked legit. They can clone it. On the landing page... Uh, from Google search, it was sketchessouthafrica.co.za. Thankfully, before I typed in the rest of the credit card details, I looked again and it it's was that simple. Sketches South Afia. They had taken out the C. And, it and I was, think a lot of people yeah. would have missed that as well, which is the problem. So you really got to tap on that URL and yeah. look at every letter. <laughs> look, the, the reason I'm mentioning it is not only to just emphasize how important it is to do, but Wendy, I then went on to Hello Peter, and sure enough, there are a yeah. string of complaints about the site. Yeah. All very recent, all August and July. So, so it's number one, new. check the URL and check the reviews. Yeah. And check for physical addresses. There would have been a lot more red flags. But it's so easy when you're in the moment. I mean, I've come close to doing things myself and I give this advice. Um, so thank you for sharing that story. And I'm glad that the little voice <laughs> just in, in your the head. of time. It was so close, <laughs> Wendy. It was so close. But yeah, again, if you are going to buy on a site you've not bought from before, Please check the URL, check that it is exactly where you intended to be. Check all those things, that it's got a legitimate website. Check on Hello Peter that it's got re decent reviews before you actually give them your credit Expect card details. the worst details. until your own checks prove otherwise. In most cases, it'll prove that you were right to be suspicious. And in this case, I will be getting into my car and driving to the Sketches Good. store at Century Good. City instead. I'm sure Sketches are happy to hear that too. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Wendy, not so happy though, the customers of a travel agency, which has gone belly up literally over this past weekend and taken a whole lot of customers' money with them. Yes. Lots and lots of money too. Paid for expensive overseas holidays um, in the Maldives. So the agency in question was... Uh, priority escapes based in four ways north of Johannesburg and it was doing a thriving trade with marketing package holidays to the Maldives being the draw card uh, the, the draw card rather being direct flights out of Johannesburg so Joburg to Male the capital of Maldives. exactly yeah. okay and for many people young old in between whatever not having to schlep via Dubai or whatever was a really big draw card okay so so yes and a lot of customers have uh, went for it. And the sad thing is that for a couple of years, Priority Escapes was promising, was delivering rather as promised. So some of the many, many victims that I spoke to um, went booked without doing any checks on the strength of really like, their best friends who went on the holiday. One woman I spoke to this morning went on a holiday in 2021 with the same crowd and everything was fine. So you can understand them not you know, being suspicious and thinking, because we always say word, word of mouth is, is the, the most best. powerful marketing. But yeah. even then, I also say you've got to check current. You've got to check because things change with companies, as we're about to as hear, heard so all often. the time. So you mm. must look, go into Hello Peter or Google Reviews or whatever and check the reviews in the last month or two. So even if your friend had an absolutely amazing trip with them four years ago. Things change so That's quickly. not a good enough recommendation you to must make you check, change your money. You must okay. check current reviews. Well, so the big, big thing here is that for all of 2023, Priority Escapes has been marketing those packages, knowing full well that there is no direct flight from Joburg to, the Mal to Maldives In any longer. Wendy, just important to say... There used to be one. Airshay Shoals did indeed used to run a direct flight and many yes. of these customers went on it and had their happy holidays. But they announced in August of last year already. Three months notice, yes. That so they were discontinuing the route. would have known. And 
December 2022 was the last direct flight. So so for all of this year, if they've been up marketing until at a least direct July, flight, they had a huge billboard in four ways that direct flights jumped out uh, from the words direct flights. Mal- sure. You should be in the Maldives. Um, and before the website was pulled down at the weekend, a lot of people took screenshots. I have some myself, which shows um, that right up until around July, they were advertising direct flights, still knowing that there weren't that there weren't any to no. be to be provided. I mean, it's it's absolutely shocking. So there was no there was no supplier for to whom to which priority escapes could pay over the money that they took for those flights. Okay, so here's where we are. Um, I mean, we're talking hundreds of people left in the lurch, losses running into millions and millions of rands. The company continued taking bookings and payments up until Friday last week. Yes. And then on the weekend, suddenly closed up office and deleted their website. Is that yes, correct? Yes, one of the victims. I'm on a WhatsApp group for, yeah. for the victims. There are um, quite a number of them now. I forget, I think 50-something. Yeah. Um, and... Um, they actually went to the office to find out what was going on, and um, it was it, it was clear that they'd been moving out happening. Um, so there was a notice saying we've ceased business. Sorry, we have we can't meet our financial commitments, which is weird because the business model had been <laughs> to take money and not pay it over. We'll get to the accommodation, the resorts okay. in a bit, um, and then by Sunday he was saying there was there was another notice that went out and said we were considering business rescue but when a business rescue practitioner is appointed in terms of the companies act the business carries on trading whereas in this case that hasn't happened they've literally locked up offices yeah. wendy let's just talk through a couple of the case studies shall we start with Njabula mazibuko a cape town resident who's one of the victims who was taken in uh who i believe made his booking in march of this year paid thirty-seven thousand rand for a week-long package which uh, immediately for me red flags go up because no way do you get a week in the maldives well for i had that a little look. money most of them yeah. were a lot more expensive but okay. this was um just not not fully catered and a very um, rustic. Um, they're not all the same. These results. Okay. I also thought this was the, this was the least amount that I've come across. So it was for two of them. It was just to celebrate his and his girlfriend's um, anniversary. That yeah, they paid in March due to depart in September. He was. I've seen his itinerary paper, flight numbers, air stations, flight numbers, departure times, and everything. That, that were clearly fictitious because they could not have happened. There is no such there is no, s- no yeah. they hadn't been by March. They hadn't been for three months, almost three months. Sure. Um, so really bad. And he said, I did dis- desktop research, sussed out as much as I could on my own. I was generally satisfied that they were legitimate operation. I had several lengthy telephone discussions with an agent of Priority Escapes who allayed anxieties about the legit- legitimacy of the business and the viability of the trip. And then on Saturday, he got that email from the owner and sole director of Priority Escapes, who is 39-year-old Francois Swart. Um and yeah, uh, like everybody else, so sorry, you direct flights to paradise, as he put it uh, in the marketing. Um, oh no, uh, got, can't happen. Um, and uh, so, I mean, let's talk about what, what clients have been told. So some have been offered options, Wendy. They were told, sorry, we, we cannot any longer offer you the direct flights that you booked and paid for. Um, they were given three options. You can postpone your trip until October because by that point they said the ru- the direct route would be up and running again. Well, nobody has provided any proof no, of that. No, um, You had the option to switch to other non-direct flights and priority escapes would pick up half of that so cost. So they said. So they said. Or they had the option of a refund, which they offered staggered over several months. So you'd be paid in installments effectively. And... Which is, when there's we, no justification for, because in yeah. this case, the money had been paid over. There was in no service cases, provided to pay it to. No. So they had taken well, no, Not in the case of the yeah. airlines and in the case of the resorts. In some cases, the money was paid. And many, as the months went on, more recently people, you know, I've got a case of a, of a couple who were, who were flying there at the weekend when mm-hmm. the news broke. Um, they'd phoned ahead weirdly. They had opted to fly on Emirates in the first place. But when they checked that they hadn't been paid, so they raised hell and they, it was paid. So they flew. Um, the news of the closure happened while they were mid-flight. Yeah, yeah. They had phoned ahead to the very cautious couple, Durban couple. They had phoned ahead to check with the resort that everything was fine. And I've seen the emails where they say, yes, we confirm it. When they got there, no, no payment. Got to the airport, went to the seaplane desk to fly to the resort. And no, and they had to pay another 95,000 rand. 
So they, they got went themselves in. to the Maldives to only to discover that yes. the rest of the trip had so not been paid for. Many of these later ones, um, and I'm on the WhatsApp group all the time. I mean, it's just it's the busiest WhatsApp group ever. And more and more people telling these stories, and that's the story now. So some of the some of them that have means are now um, talking to them about uh, you know the resorts are trying to accommodate them at you know discounted prices. Other agencies have stepped in, but for many people, they just don't have the resources. They saved up furiously for months and months for the special occasion spoil, and they just don't have the money to now go and repay for for, for, for the yeah. holiday. So so yes, there were a few that did. Um, put under extreme pressure and threats and everything, did get some um, of their losses refunded. But there's a whole lot. Um, the last tally I saw, and I know it must be much more, was Monday evening, 57 complaints. And there would be groups, many of them. One company did, I think, 35, a booking for 35 It was an incentive of trip, yeah. yeah. Um, it was over 10 million at that point. So that, you know, and that's just a certain percentage of people on this one website, WhatsApp group of victims. I hate using the word victim, but just well applied in this case and it's I mean I'm sure there are many more who whose losses haven't been um, added to that tally so we're talking yeah. a substantial amount, amount of money, of money. Okay. okay so the million dollar question Wendy is these people paid their money to Priority Escapes clearly Priority Escapes wasn't paying that money onto Air Seychelles because there was not, no flight not to pay them for no. and in some cases it wasn't paying that money onto the hotel groups because these people are arriving in the yes. Maldives and being told you still have to pay for your accommodation or when they're checking now sorry yeah. there is a booking but it's not paid so where are all those millions and millions of well, rands well that's what a lot of people want to know so mm. They've brought in attorneys. There was a Teams meeting late yesterday, which I attended, um, along with a lot of the people that have lost out. And there was talk of, you know, a liquidation application. But, you know, for that to, to bear fruit, there has to be money in the accounts. There were two accounts, an Investec account and a Nedbank account into which monies were paid. Interestingly, um, many people said they wanted to pay by credit card and were told, no, it has to be an EFT. Mm. You know, because chargeback, you get a ch the chargeback protection on, um, on a credit, credit card. card payment. But there's a four-month um, limit anyway. So mm. so if you booked in, in March, it's too late to Well, it now. depends on the bank. It's when you paid or when the service was supposed to be. So ah. I think there's some, some, some wiggle room there. Wiggle room there as, w as well. But the fact that's always a red flag, by the way. If, you, if you're told when you, you're, you're paying for goods or services that you cannot pay with a credit card. Um, especially for travel, because a lot of people take advantage travel. of the travel insurance exactly. that comes with it. I'm not talking about going to a spa as a shop here. We're talking yeah. about big, uh, big outlay. Big red flag. Okay, so Wendy, just before we, um, with one hour on the clock, I know you managed to have some correspondence with, with the, the lawyer who's representing Priority Escapes. You didn't get an awful lot out of them. But they, they, they did at least acknowledge your email initially when you mailed saying, hey, where's the money? How can your client justify offering these staggered payments? Uh, the attorney then came back to you um, with all kinds of stories. What what, what what feedback did you get? Yeah, okay. So um, I, I, she basically kicked the can down the road. She said that um, she, well, first of all, she said she acted for priority escapes and not Francois Swart, well, he's the sole director, so there's okay. semantics. Um, and she kicked the can down the road saying she he can't talk frankly to me about a lot of things because they, he signed NDA, non-disclosure agreements, but I should go to his office in Johannesburg this coming Friday. This is last Thursday, she yes. told me this. Um, so like, really looking for a long delay. And uh, uh, he will give me what she called a peak at these um, documents, presumably around uh, um, replacement direct flights, which doesn't take away from the fact that she didn't address at all, of course, was that he continued to sell these packages without having um, a plan B for direct flights in place. Yeah, right? he, he sold something he knew didn't exist. Exactly. Let's just call it what it is. Yeah. You can't sell something in the hope that you're going to get something in yeah. its place. Um, she says, my client, it, it does what I often get, paints the, 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 the perpetrator as the victim. You know, mm. my client is... Um, assures you that the money paid by his clients has not been misused to feather Mr. Swart's nest, and that he has every intention of paying back the money required. She said she'd advise him, advise him to go into business rescue, but he was reluctant because it will mean the end of the business. Okay, that's interesting because he then he then went closed and his own business. Said he was going to, yes. Um, the period that this problem with the direct flights arose is a short one, and my client has settled with many of the clients who were affected. So I wrote back to say this is I don't need to meet him, and if there's no point anyway to take a peek at something that I cannot report on, 
um, please just answer the question, why did he mark it? We have this, this solid proof that this happened. And why, how is, are the staggered payments justified? Because he made a lot of promises, starting yeah. in September, mind you, that he'd pay them back. How are they justified given the fact that no money's been paid over? Um, so to they, the service they, providers. To the yeah. service providers, so the money should be available. And I, was t I, I gave them until Monday to respond. And, of course, we know what happened on the weekend. I had been exchanging SMSs with Francois Swart directly, sort of around the lawyer's response and whatever. And when I sent through one, the first complainant's um, story, he said, oh, I'm so devastated to hear this. And I thought, mm, please, at the time. But by Monday, um, my messages weren't being delivered, my, 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 sorry, my texts. And I'd heard from one of the other victims that he has a new cell phone number. So he's ditched the other one, which okay. you, it adds up to all one very unfortunate So picture. just a very quick mention. Somebody asking, is there not an industry ombud or watch body that you can go no, to? No, Wendy unregulated. ASATA is the Association of Southern African Travel yes. Agents we've spoken to before. But that's voluntary membership, is, is and he wasn't a member, was he? He wasn't a member. Um, you, It's not to say that, uh, you know, that... Uh, you have to be a member of a SATA to be considered legitimate and, you know, but as Otto de Vries, who's the CEO of a SATA, told me uh, a couple of days ago, um, it, it does seem to be that almost all, if not all, these ones that have done this, these... these um, Lava night. Yeah, yeah, the scandals around travel agents, they've all been non-members. Membership of that body is voluntary. Priority Escapes was not a member, so they've got no jurisdiction to do anything about this. No, but there's no support that they yeah. can offer people. But what did he say? I mean, he, he did said, offer some advice, well, didn't he, he? Of course, the legitimate um, members of, of the industry are furious because they say every time this happens, it gives us a bad name and people think, oh, I'm not going to book through, through a, a travel, travel agent, agent, which is unfortunate. He said it was unforgivable that Priority Escapes had actively promoted and sold trips to the Maldives with direct flights, knowing full well that the service was no longer available. Um, he says the industry is not regulated, which can make it difficult for consumers to find trustworthy and responsible travel partners. We strongly, of course he would, but he strongly encourages uh, consumers to engage with ASATA members, which can be verified through ASATA's website, because a lot of people, uh, companies make claims that that aren't legitimate. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, we have a strict code of conduct, a constitution, and there's the ASATA charter. Um, I also wanted to know about the refund situation, not just for this case, but others. And here's how it works. He says, when you pay money for, a, say, a package, which is flight and accommodation, the flights um, must be according to IATA, that you've got to pay them over, the agent's got to pay them over within 14 days at the at the longest. So they the, the agents will make payments every 14 days over okay. to the airlines, right? So it's, it's pretty immediate. But with accommodation suppliers, with resorts, as in this case, he says in the industry it's, it's the norm for that money to be paid over, you know, in the last month or even in the last two weeks. Okay. So... It's good to know that, and if you're going through an agent or an agency uh, to make your checks, he says not to victim blame, but a simple Google search would have shown from December, January this year that those flights have been, the Air Seychelles terminated its direct flights to the Maldives. You would have been able to find that. Yeah. Um, but, you, you know, the you thing just is you wouldn't trust. think you need to look for exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. You shouldn't have to, but yeah. it really... You really sure. just should. I mean, it, it's ridiculous to say that. But what do I always say? Expect, plan what? Expect. Hope for the best. Hope for the best. Thank you. I've lost Expect my own worst. advice. Yeah. Exactly. So, so yeah. His advice is to do your own checks, um, and uh, and and just to know to knowing how the payment system works is a help. So, But again, that raises the question, if that money was meant to be paid over to the airline within 14 days, Wendy, where's the money? It's yeah, sitting well, in somebody's it, account. And he, those flats were, yeah. not, were non-existent, so he couldn't have paid, paid them, for them. In, yeah. at any point. So Jeff asking on the WhatsApp, you know, surely this can be tracked via the bank account into which that money was paid. That would require some kind of forensic investigator on the case. Wendy, has anybody laid and criminal charges? Yes, lots of them have. Um, okay. I'm looking on the WhatsApp group, um, I'm seeing case numbers um, coming through fast and furious um some people are saying and this always happens some people are saying they the, the police at the counter the, the 
SAP station, they went to say, no, it's a it's a civil case, not a criminal case. Well, of course, fraud is a is, is a, a, sub, is a criminal case. Fraud yeah. is a criminal case. So we're just saying, you know, stick with it. I've got, oh, let's see, up to I think twenty two cases now, all over the place, uh, ma- mainly Gauteng, but Cape Town, Westville, and KZN. Um, yeah, it's and the numbers are um, that only the case numbers is here, but I've seen on another. Uh, another post, the amounts are astronomical yes. because it is a very expensive destination. Wendy, I mean, this number of victims, the the amounts of money we're talking, surely this would be something that the likes of the Hawks yes. should be looking so into. So that is the plan. That's why these cases are being compiled okay. and will be handed over to the Hawks as well. A lot of the people that I've spoken to have said, look, we... We pretty much know liquidation, whatever, is not really a means of getting our money back. That money was probably moved, and even if it's not, you get a few cents in the rand. That's how it works. But they are adamant that um, that this character doesn't pop up under another name and do it again yeah. to somebody else. You know, even if let's say for some people it's a, a you know it's an anniversary, it's a celebration, it's a 60th birthday in one case, and and even for those that can. You know, afford to pay again so as not to lose, lose out the on their holiday. whole holiday. Even in, in in those cases, you know, the 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 stress and drama um, that's involved. I spoke to a woman yesterday who was supposed to fly out um, on Saturday um, on honeymoon. Oh no, shame! They're in Belita at the moment, um, having a few days break there instead, and they are planning to to rebook and go in September. But can you imagine? They were they were an hour an hour or so away from driving to the airport when they had word um, that the holiday you've paid for doesn't actually they didn't exist. actually yeah. arrive at the airport. But I'm sure a few people, a few groups would have. And imagine that moment of walking up to the air station's desk to say, "I'm here to check in on flight X Y Z no. from Joburg," and being told there no, is no, no such, such flight. Such flight. Yeah. Unbelievable. Wendy, thank you for um, the in-depth digging you've done on this one, and we will keep you posted uh, if there are any further developments on that case. Uh, for those asking who came in late, uh, the company involved was Priority Escapes, based in four ways in Johannesburg, and chiefly uh, marketing trips to the Maldives. Somebody's saying Wendy should run a critical thinking course, 10 steps in spotting a scam, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of and a number even, of us who'd be happy to sign up for that. Yeah, and even then I wouldn't cover them all. It's yeah. just it's getting more and more difficult to start Day one step ahead of the fraudsters, unfortunately. Yeah. Now, the next one doesn't involve fraud. It involves hijacking of appliances, which is a phrase yes. I never expected to be uttering on air, Wendy. Exactly. And it's a thing. I've been uh, in, back in my early days of consumer journalism, like 20 plus years ago, there was a crowd in Durban that uh, were based um, on adjacent to a road called Gum, Gumtree Lane or Gum, Gumtree Avenue. And I called them the Gumtree Gang, which sort of okay. stuck. Yeah. And um, yeah, they would, they would. You'd phone them up, you know, and they'd come and take your appliance away, which is unjustified, as we're going to get to in a bit. And and then um, do either strip stuff out or say they fixed it when they didn't or just give you an outrageous quote that you rejected and then... Um, not return it. Not return it. So it's basically stealing your appliance in, in, in the worst case scenario. And so... I hope us, that's not what's happened to Mary, well, our listener, but it might well be. Yes, so, so Mary emailed last week about her dishwasher dilemma, and as I started reading, and I just thought, oh, this is the Gumtree gang, classic modus operandi. So, her Bosch dishwasher stopped working. She looked up, and this is this is like you did with the sketches. The sketches shoes, she yeah. she googled Bosch. The first company that came up with Bosch attached was Repair Center. Now they pay for that for their result to come up at the top. Same happened with me with sketches, yeah. by the way. And it's yeah. good. It's money well spent because it, it it yields results. She filled and listened to this. There's no contact number. Okay. So that's the first thing. Not even a contact number, much less an address. There was just a form. So she filled in the form, gave her details. Think mm-hmm. about that. I mean, <laughs> And then she got a call from a chap called Miles to say he'd come the next day. He did. He looked at the dishwasher and said the motherboard was faulty and had to be replaced. Gave her a verbal quote of 1,800 Rand, which Mary's husband accepted. Then it gets dodgy. He said the machine had to be taken in and he asked for a 200 Rand call out fee, which they paid in cash, got no receipt. A few days later, Miles verbally quoted them 3,000 rand for the repair, one five for the part and one five for labor. 
We felt this wasn't acceptable as he'd originally quoted a lower price and we asked him to return the machine without repairing it. Since then, Mary told us we've I phoned every couple of days and he said he will return it on specific days and has never come. He also sent Mary a written quote, which I've seen. This one was 3.5. Replacement of the motherboard, 2,000. Replacement of the washer sensor, 700. Labor, 800 rand. So that's the third different quote she's yes. given them for the same job. Yes. Okay. She, she says, I've... Uh, Mary says, I've threatened Miles with going to social media, the consumer ombudsman, and the police to no avail. I've also written to Bosch and asked if they would intervene on my behalf as their name is being besmirched by him, claiming he works on Bosch machines. So the, the appliance brands have heard this all before. They seldom yeah. get involved. Um, so, yeah, Miles was not answering her calls. I'm not sure what else to do. You can't get hold of the company as you have to fill in your details and they phone you back. So all she has is Miles' as a cell phone number. Think about that. He could be sitting in, in a different country. Part of the world, she yeah. Knows. yeah. She says, I know we have been rather naive, but we've never had problems before. So she is without her machine. Miles took it away. And, okay, I understand why she would not accept a quote of 3,500 Rand, having initially been quoted 1,800 Rand. Wendy, did you have any luck getting hold of Miles yourself? I did. get. First of all, I was given the wrong number, so I left that for a couple of days, and then I checked and... Um, got the right, a number had been left out, uh, uh, a digit had been left off rather. So I, f- I spoke to Miles just this morning, actually. He acknowledged that he had uh, the dishwasher in question and that the couple hadn't accepted the quote. When I said they really, I, I mean, said who I was, obviously identified myself. I said they really needed to return the dishwasher. He said, yeah, in time. I said, Not in <laughs> with time. respect, Fine, yeah. You basically, you've got a machine that you haven't paid for. In fact, they'd paid him 200 rand, remember, as the call to take fee. it away, yeah. Um, you can't be holding it hostage in this way. This is, could be a police matter, which obviously, they don't, I mean, who's going to find them? And he said, mm. yes, okay. And he committed to returning it next Tuesday, which I'm really not hopeful of. Um I mean, the, say, yeah, Mary, that, that dishwasher could be anywhere by now, and Wendy, um, it could be in pieces. On his, it could be in pieces. It mm. could, it could be sold. It, it could be anything. So, really, not a great way um, to to go about getting um, a product um, repaired. Wendy, of course, okay, so the the reality is that perhaps Mary's never going to see her machine again. Um, Let's be hopeful and think maybe Miles will be convinced by your call to get it back to her. But the bigger question is, what can we all learn from this? Obviously, uh, what you flagged there is if a supplier doesn't want to give you opportunities to engage with them, that's a red flag. If all you've got is an online form with no other way of contacting them, why yes. would you trust them by you handing over a large where expensive they are. Uh, machine? Yeah, they, you you sending it off to a professional outfit it's called the repair center. Well, it must exist somewhere. If they give you an address, do a Google Map search. You can have Check a look. Check that they exist. I've, it sounds terrible to have to go to these lengths, but but this is why. It's it, these are not sort of one-off cases. This is the world we're operating. This is in. the world we're operating in. So more, more importantly, Wendy, in this particular case. The the red flag was the the mere offer to take the machine away altogether. Yes. You you actually know, reached out to an expert for advice yes, on I'd, this and asked how in what sort of circumstances would it be necessary to take a machine off site to repair exactly. it? Exactly, because I know from my Gumtree gang reporting days that it, even then twenty plus years ago it, it wasn't. Badly. I thought maybe something's changed. I doubt it. Anyway, so I got hold of Margaret Hirsch, CEO of the appliance retailer Hirsch's, and um, I said no. My advice has always been to be highly suspicious if somebody wants to remove your fridge, your washing machine, your dishwasher, whatever, from your premises. And she said, absolutely spot on. The only time we would take an appliance away is if it's a massive side-by-side fridge that has to have a, a, you know, a very big repair. And and even then, very rarely do we do that. 99.9% of all repairs can be done in the customer's home. The only reason that we would take it out is if the customer is hanging over the technician and telling him what to do all the time. And there's not enough, or there's not enough space to open everything up if the customer has a tiny kitchen. Um, so if a washing machine needs a new, uh, needs to have its drum removed, you know, and it's, it's really cramped, they might say. But she said, you know, it's very, very, very rare. And think about it. I mean, to be carting these appliances around is very is not cost effective mm. for a bona fide repairer. It only works for you financially if you've got ulterior motives to take that machine away, away. because you have no intention of bringing it back again. Or you're yeah. going to extort money, or you're going to strip some parts out. Or in my case, for the Gumtree Gang, um, for a carte blanche collaborative I did, 
all those years ago. My very own washing machine was the was the product used, and we filmed the te- you know bona fide technicians marking key parts. Got this big repair bill after the machine went off and was brought back, and none of the parts that they quoted for expen- that was expensive ones had been removed. And so then the Debbie went off inside. and confronted them, and there was a whole drama <laughs> then. But yeah, this this look. There are a lot of wonderful, you know, repair uh, repairers out there attached to big companies and working on their own. Don't really want to cast aspersions and paint everyone with the same brush. But there are these rogues operating, and the fastest way to find them is to type in the brand of your appliance and say Cape Town or Observatory or whatever. You know, <laughs> that kind of same story applies to um, a locksmith or you know anything like that. Uh, you, don't do that. Get, get these people. Get the details of these people before they you, you have need of them, and have them checked out, and check the reviews, and check everything. Um, and not. And if that's too much slip, I can promise you, it's not nearly as much slip as when you don't do that homework and you get caught. This is the one. I was going to say reason, Wendy. This is the almost the sole reason I'm still a member of our neighbourhood watch WhatsApp group. Yes. Because for all the things They're on it that helpful. I hate, the one thing you can rely on is. Does anybody have an electrician to recommend or a plumber and to recommend please that ask, you have used? When did you use them? As we started okay. off saying in this show, that needs to be a recent recommendation because things change fast, as we have keep hearing. Keep hearing. Yeah, unfortunately. So yeah. Don't, and if somebody, you know, there has to be outside, it goes for us to say, like, you know, in, the, in that month or two at most, uh, there must be recent reviews, recommendations. Okay, so word of mouth is a very powerful tool, but make sure that it's recent word mm-hmm. of mouth uh, is is the bottom line here. Yeah, Vic suggesting we should all put in fake requests to repair centre to come and look at <laughs> non-existent broken machines, and that'll teach them. Look, uh, keep us posted. I, I mean, I'd love to hope that Miles will get the machine back to Mary, and that will be the end of the story. Although, of course, she'll still have to find somebody else to fix the thing for her. Um, Wendy, one of our listeners also suggesting rather phone the manufacturer and ask them to recommend a service provider in your area That's that they can recommend. Of course, Margaret Hirsch says go with, with companies that have their own report r- r- repairers, like her company does. But, they're, you know, that is, um, if they don't have their own repairers, the big retailers are a good place to ask, you know, for an out-of-warranty machine, who would you recommend? Because they're dealing with this issue all the time. So that's okay. another thing another way to get a good recommendation lunch with pippa hudson on cape talk